This is a Let's Talk Church Safety and Security Microsode with your host, Paul Buckner. Hey, she dogs. So, headed to an appointment this morning. It's still nice and early in the Ozarks. It's not unbearably hot yet. And uh, just wanted to talk for a minute about uh, flashlights, uh, about weapon-mounted lights, and and where and how we use and place our flashlight on our body. I've talked about this to a degree before, but I've had in the last 48 hours, I've had several conversations that have had an enormous impact on on this video. So in my own life, I didn't, at one point many years ago, I did not see a need or a practical use for me to have a weapon mounted light on my flashlight. So I didn't carry one. And um, I, I was like, I carry a flashlight and I understood, you know, strong hand. Um, I understood that you want to bring your flashlight up in your support hand. So I literally carry in my in my back pocket. I literally carry a flashlight at all times. And um, on my primary carry weapon, I have a weapon mounted light, and it's there all the time um, because of a specific encounter. So if I can if I can save you some heart heartache and potentially shorten the learning curve for you, I will. Because I ended up in a situation, I was I was locking doors and, and turning out lights, and I did a sweep around the outside of the church, and we were having a problem with break-ins. We found out later it was a combination of things going on. We actually had a couple of guys that were breaking in and stealing food, and then we had a young boy that was uh, from a pretty rough family, and he's headed on to get himself into some trouble, sadly, uh, as much as we tried to help him. So we planted some seeds. I, I pray that the Lord brings the harvest in Jesus' name. But all of that being what it is, this young man would go through and unlock windows and then crawl through them later that night. So he would he would come to a Sunday night service, a Wednesday night service, he would unlock a window and then he would try to crawl through it. So I was having to be very careful to make sure that everything got locked down. And he eventually quit because he figured out I was on to him. But anyway, so as I was walking around uh, the church, um, a guy actually ran at me out of the darkness. And I've told this story before, but it's been a minute. And you can take this or leave it, but uh, God doesn't talk to me every day. It's not this, you know, hey, Paul, how was breakfast? Um, but I did have a situation where as I'm walking around the church, uh, this is my last church, um, and the, the way that there were add-ons and stuff, you didn't always have a clear line of sight, and I heard God's voice say, put your hand on your gun. That was exactly what I heard God say, and so I immediately, like, pulled up my cover garment and put my hand on my weapon because when God speaks to me like that, it's, it's not time to play. And I put my hand immediately on my weapon and within two seconds, I mean, it was so fast. This guy came running around the corner and it lowered himself to tackle me. And he was, uh, he's actually lost his life since, but he was a local uh, malcontent. He caused a lot of problems. We did a lot of ministry to him, trying to lead him to Christ. He had a massive drug problem and he absolutely refused. Uh, he literally would steal from us. He would steal things that we had offered to give him for free. He would steal it later that night. I, it just, it never made sense to me. He was a very broken man and I'm, I'm sad to see him go the way he went. But at a full run, he was coming at me uh, and he had seen my flashlight and he thought I was a cop. Uh, irony being what it is, I'm headed to be a cop now. And, uh, but it, it was... It was one of those moments where I know God protected me. The guy was an extremely capable fighter and was known to be very, very difficult to, to best in a fight. And that he had actually, he was wanted at that moment for beating a man so severely that they had to wire his jaw shut. So that probably would have been me. And the guy had good breaks because at a full run coming at me, at this full run, um, he heard the slap of the kydex, the snap of the kydex as my gun was coming out of the holster. And he literally reversed his body and and stepped back at a at fully complete stop from a dead run. And he goes, hey, man, how's it going? Or something like that. And the hey, man part was dead on. I, I, I'll never forget that. And I said, what are you doing? And so we had this conversation. And uh, he ended up going his way and I ended up going mine. Um, now I would have I would have held him at gunpoint on the ground. At the time, not knowing the laws, not knowing my state's laws, different things that go with that, I didn't have the confidence that I would have now. So all of that being what it is, um, I realized in that moment though, as I had one hand on my flashlight, my support hand, and one hand on my firearm, I realized that 
um, I could not reach my cell phone. And that is a very powerful truth. And again, I try to be a very real person and I try to talk to you about um, my successes and failures, the things that I learned the hard way, because if I can help you shorten that learning curve, uh, think of, of uh, Carl Shin, where he talks about carrying enough gun for the fight, and he talks about the mistakes that he had made before the, the new life uh, church shooting, where he, he felt like he was carrying, uh, by his own words, uh, uh, a firearm that was inadequate to the task at hand. It was like a 32 caliber single stack Kel-Tec with no backup mag. Um, you know, carry enough gun for the fight. Well, I try to be that way with my own walk where I've made mistakes. And I think transparency and, and humility, uh, especially in this realm, is, is desperately, desperately needed. And so I realized in that moment that I could not, I was either going to have to lower my flashlight, which would, he would have been gone. He'd have been, you know, uh, invisible to me or lower my weapon, neither of which I was willing to do. And uh, my weapon was low ready. I was not willing to take my hand off my weapon and I had no way of calling 911. Um, that's not cool. Now, I almost immediately went and purchased a weapon mount of light and began to train with it. And I've talked about this before, but you wanna make sure whenever you're doing something with your firearm, that you're not using your weapon mounted light to search for anything. Never, you never draw your weapon to use your weapon and light to search for something. And that happens. You carry another flashlight. and But you also want to make sure that you are not using your flashlight in your strong hand. So if you are right-handed and that's the, the hand you're going to use to manipulate your firearm, your primary hand on your firearm, you want to either carry your flashlight on the left side of your body uh, so that your support hand can go for it. And that is where I deliberately carry mine. Or, uh, or you want to make arrangements because I will tell you Whatever you have in your hand when something like that goes sideways, this is why they teach guys in the military to walk with their hands out of their pockets. This is why they teach um, law enforcement officers to carry their flashlight on their support side. Um, you want to make sure that you have, um, that you're, you're not setting yourself up for failure. You want to stack everything to where you have all of the fair and unfair advantages you have if your life becomes in danger. And I will tell you, I've actually been in situations where my wife and I were in a volatile, uh, potentially volatile situation. We were trying to leave it, and my wife's my wife was understandably uh, concerned because there was uh, there was a potential for violence. And my wife's like, um, I, "I'm scared. What do you want me to do?" And I said, "We're going to walk calmly out of this environment." And we were walking down a sidewalk, and there was lots of little places that people could hide. And I said, "Here," and I handed her my tactical flashlight, and I said, "If you." pointed at whatever shadows you want to and we're going to walk from here back to our vehicle and, and we did we walked safely and nobody bothered us and uh she's like well what about you don't you need your flashlight and i said well you have that one um and you point all the shadows you want i have the one on, on my weapon and she goes so what do you want me to do if somebody tries to attack us and i said you, you point that flashlight hit it in the face with that flashlight beam and trust me i'll take care of the rest and she's like okay i like it Having more than one flashlight on your body, one, uh, two is one, one is none, it's an old saying that's not wrong. I've had flashlights go down on me in, in situations. I've had police officers turn to me and say, my flashlight just went dead, I need yours. Many times now, as the chaplain, uh, I have actually had somebody hand me their flashlight. Uh, or I said that completely backwards. I have I have handed an officer my flashlight, and there are actually times that I will ride with an apartment that I know that it's a it's a time of year, it's a holiday weekend where there's a lot of drinking or or things that other other things in that environment that mean that we might need a couple of high speed flashlights. And I will say, hey, do you have another flashlight? And so I have my flashlight one of their flashlights and they will generally have at least one on them plus one on their weapon because you need to be able to transition to where if you've drawn your weapon on somebody and you've got them at gunpoint if you're a police officer you need to be able to get your radio if you're church security you need to be able to get your radio you need to be able to get your cell phone I've literally been with police officers that cannot get out on their shoulder mic of their radio and they have to use their cell phone to call dispatch uh, to be able to get somebody there. Um, I've been sent back to the car to get the officer's cell phone so that they can call for backup or call for something that they needed that they needed to keep off the radio. There's times that not every bad guy needs to know because uh, some bad guys listen to uh, they listen to the scanner 
uh, and they will they will tune in and listen to go, oh, the officers are involved in this. I'm going to go do bad things over there. And even scrambled, uh, even scrambled radios, there are bad guys that will steal out of like a firefighter's vehicle. They'll see all the firefighter logos, you know, uh, and symbology all over the vehicle and that volunteer firefighter that's so proud of their status, which is great. That's fine. But they will target their vehicle and steal their scrambled radio so that they can listen to secure law enforcement communications. And, but anyway, I digress. One of the things that you need to be able to do is have that one hand free because you never know what else you might need to be able to do. And yes, you can train and manipulate your flashlight and your weapon at the same time, but if you happen to need both of them at the same time, you've got a real problem. So I was with an officer yesterday that ironically, um, he carries his flashlight behind his firearm on his strong side, on his right side. And I, I kind of questioned that kind of, you know, kind of scratched my head there. Uh, and I said, can I, can I ask you about that? And he said, as soon as I pick up the flashlight and I, I bring it up, I bring it over to my support team. He said, I'm just out of room on that side of my belt. And with his department, he's allowed to place his own gear. Okay. It's not something I would do. It's, it's a choice he's made that, that, that is, it's his choice. I respect it. It's just his choice. And it's not a decision that I would make that exact same way. But if you're, if you're going to do something like that, I would highly recommend that you put the weapon on your support side. And you, you can get used to it. It's amazing how, how, how accustomed you can get to carrying gear. I literally carry it all times on me. I carry uh, a SWAT T in my back pocket, and right next to it, I carry a flashlight. And I use that flashlight. You know, my, I'm 44 years old. My eyes are not what they used to be. And I will literally carry... Uh, that tactical flashlight and use it um, several times a day and a lot of times I have to have to take the beam because it's so piercingly bright I have to take that beam and I'll point it next to what I need to read uh, or look at because by doing that and placing the beam there I'm actually able to um, I'm actually able to see better now funny story I have a I have a friend who um, borrowed, or uh, um, that related to me, uh, not, I, we're friends, but the individual's related to me by marriage, the, this person said they, they had borrowed my flashlight and gone for a walk with my flashlight, and they said, hey, um, I, uh, I feel like your flashlight needs to have a, an automated recording that says, um, show, you know, uh, you know, raise your hands, show me your hands, put your hands up, something like that. They're like, holy cow, that thing's bright. It's not even the highest lumen flashlight you can get out there. So anyway, it's just something to think about when you find yourself in a in a position is to, um, uh, to make sure that you're not handicapping yourself, that you're not selling yourself short, to make sure that you are carrying your gear in a place that, that works for you uh, to where you can use a support hand and whatever, because you will tend to clench whatever ends up in your strong hand, whatever ends up in your hands, period, when something goes sideways. And um, I remember a guy told me he was uh, uh, admin at a sheriff's department. He said, I watched an officer that that officer um, was trying to run through a door in an emergency and he was trying to open the door with what he had in his hand. And that's someone who's trained this stuff happens a lot. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. Remember separate discipline and a lifestyle of discipline and training. God bless. If you enjoyed this microsode, check out the video and audio versions of the Let's Talk Church Safety and Security podcast.